right. And we are live. <gasps> All right. Welcome, everybody, to um, the re premiere of Misspent Youth. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I am Nori, aka Science Weasels. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr um, and in the Discord as Science Weasels. Um, I am the GM or the authority for Misspent Youth, which is a game of teenage rebellion in a fucked up future. Um, we are running on Welcome to the Party, uh, which is a wonderful, uh, wonderful group of people. And if you uh, would like to join us, the Discord link is down below. Um, so I'm going to let my players introduce themselves, uh, starting with Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm on Twitter at Sithwitch. Uh, what else? I can be what found. What do you do, Lauren? What do I do? Okay. Uh, I am an audiobook narrator, a voice actress, a podcaster. Um, I'm on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. on the Guinea Geek Network with Michelle, who is also a player here, uh, where we talk about Marvel stuff. Um, you can hear me on a few audio dramas, like uh, Subject Found, um, yeah, What Happened to Julie, uh, Strange and Unusual, I pop up every now and then on other random stuff. You can find a full list of things at lwsalinas.com, that's L, the letter W, S-A-L-I-N-A-S dot com, and I'm so happy to be here doing this. I love role-playing games, Nori, tons of fun. That was very polished. Good job. <laughs> you have set the bar impossibly high. Uh, we'll move on to Rain. Oh, I have to follow that? Yep. Oh, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm Rain Hayes. You can find me on Twitter as Rain Ghost with X's all around it because I am extra. Um, you can also find me here on Welcome to the Party. I am on the Saturday morning well, morning for me, uh, Warhammer game, uh, as well as the podcast uh, Echo A Location Service, which will be starting up soon. We've recorded a few episodes. Uh, other than that, I do mostly freelance writing and take care of a small whirlwind. All right. Uh, Tony. Uh, hey, I'm Tony Highwin. That is also the Twitter name. Uh, I probably have the worst connection. That's why I'm uh, a still frame of a very sleepy looking guy instead of an active moving person like all these other uh, beautiful folks you see before you. Uh, I'm also posting something in the Discord uh, to try and you know be on all platforms as it were. Uh, and I can't wait to uh, play uh, Misspent Youth. I I'm a 34-year-old, uh, you know, troublemaker. I love the idea of this game. I want to create an authority and then tear it down. Rock on. <laughs> and finally, last but not least, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Ely. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Michelle Ely. Uh, my podcast with Lauren on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. I also podcast um, with two other guys about the CW show Arrow called Starlight Tribune. I... I'm a geek. I have a day job that I don't want to talk about because it's a day job. <laughs> and I'm really happy that we have the internet so I can finally do role-playing games with people instead of just video games. So I'm looking forward to this. All right. Excellent. So uh, for those of you that turned tuned in two weeks ago, um, I learned the hard way that my computer cannot simultaneously run video and streaming services. So we have um, a producer who is helping us out and um, is uh, doing all the hard stuff for me so I can just focus on GMing. This is really exciting for me. So um, for those of you that did not tune in two weeks ago, uh, we are currently in uh, world building. Um, the way that Misspent Youth works is, uh, like Tony said, you build an authority that you then get to tear down. Um, so we had started world building and then um, my computer exploded twice, the Zoom meeting ended, people's, uh, people's lives, you know, pulled them in different directions. So um, after a brief respite, we are back and 
I am just going to very quickly go over um, what we had come up with last time. So the first thing in world building is creating the authority, AKA what I am going to be playing, what I'm going to be um, inhabiting. And we came up with, um, and it's supposed to be something that makes you fucking mad. So um, also if there are any children watching this stream, don't, I swear a lot. Um, <laughs> So we don't have a name for our authority yet um, or a description, but we know that their vice is uh, utopianism. Am I doing that correctly? Let me check. Yes, their vice is utopianism, which means that uh, the utopian authority thinks it knows what's best for you and it really believes whatever fucked up scheme it has will make the world a better place. So um, the victim of our utopian authority is freedom, freedom of choice, speech, religion, the press, movement, uh, freedom of body, all of those things are anathema to the authority and are what it is working to eradicate. How? We don't know yet. We're going to figure that out. And finally, uh, the last thing that we were able to do is um, the face, the form the authority takes, uh, the face it wears to tell you what you need to do to attack it directly. So we picked religious. Um, the authority operates on unquestioned received wisdom and sees disagreement as moral failing. Um, so that's where we are this week. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is define the need of the uh, authority. So basically for characters to be interesting, they have to want things. A need is like a sentence or two about what the authority desires and what it would do to the world if, it, if uh, the player characters weren't there to stop it. So um, I am gonna open up the floor. I feel like I have been talking a lot and talking rather rapidly. So A, I'm gonna slow down and B, um, I'm gonna let other people talk for a while about uh, what you think the authority needs and um, how that uh, is going to play out. So. <clears throat> so are we looking for like the, the mechanisms that it needs? Um, so let me pull up the example that they have. Um, I think we're looking more for the result that it's after, uh, like what it's going to do. It has to be an active thing. Mm -hmm. It can't be that it just wants okay. things to stay the way they are. It has an objective it's moving towards. Yeah. yeah. It says on the thing, the need is the sword hanging over our heads. If we fail, this is what's going to happen, and it's going to be our fault. So what about if it needs political authority? So it can start changing laws and start really actively creating its utopia. Okay, that's interesting. I like that. Um, yeah, I guess my question for that is like, how far along in the utopia are we? Like, is it is it basically right now with President Trump and Justice Kavanaugh? <laughs> God. Oh. Too and close. this is why I drink. <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen. Brief break. Okay. Uh, for all of us, uh, <laughs> that that's uh, that's a little too close, right? Right. Or are we going like a little bit more *Handmaid's Tale*, *Republic of Gilead* kind of thing? I have no idea what that is, but um, I'll go with it. <laughs> okay, so that is a dystopian future based on a biblical reinterpretation where women are chattel. Um, I want to burn that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I super want to burn all oh, of it yeah. down. Well, so, it's one of the things that you keep coming up with if you study cults is a lot of it revolves around the kind of objectification of especially women because it's a lot of the whole, oh, you need to just keep pumping out new followers, whether it's like the Quiverful movement, uh, the, the FLDS, um, the family. Um, you know, the list goes on. The Republic of Gilead. 
where it's this whole repopulation after this horrible nuclear event. Um, and in the show, I know it's clear that it's just the U.S. that's the Republic of Gilead. Canada is not. Mexico is not. But they're trying to kind of get other countries to follow their lead. So, um, yeah, basically, how much power do you want the authority to have? Do you want it to be just like a baby cult getting started? Or do you want it to be more well established? Do you want it to be in process? Where, where do you I guys kinda, want that to go? I kind of like the idea of there being like a, a corporate entity that they work through. Like that is their, that is their basis for entering the political field is they have significant power through this corporation and, and their lobbyists, you know, they, they have influence within the government, but they are not yet in the government. Like Scientology or Nexium or something. That's exactly yeah. what I was about to say. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Scientology and the business that they operate through is the media. Ooh. So for those who weren't here last time, uh, as I've mentioned before, I do a lot of reading about cults. <laughs> <laughs> like, not even we, kidding. We got an education. <laughs> yeah, not even kidding. The day after we tried recording last time, there was a marathon of uh, escaping polygamy on, I think it was Lifetime. And I just sat and watched that for like four hours. <laughs> All right. All right. Um so I really like the idea of the authority being, um... oh, if it's media, something like the Duggars, you know, where they have this whole wholesome image and like, it's the very, you know, the veneer of like, oh, we're promoting our brand. Right. Right. Okay. I can see that. Who are the Duggars? You uh, your 19 life. kids and counting. Yikes. They're part of the quiverful movement. That sounds exhausting. Yes. Yeah. The whole point. Okay. The <laughs> On whole a number point of levels. Of the quiverful movement is they're a branch of evangelical Christianity who take to heart this one particular Bible verse about being an arrow in the quiver of the Lord. And to that end, they have as many kids as they can physically have to the point where Michelle Duggar has been very open about having several prolapses. And the doctors are like, okay, you physically cannot have any more kids. And they're like, mm, but we want more. We want and, the God to be well-armed. Yeah, and that's the whole point is they want to, their whole thing is we will outbreed you. We will make our kids into a whole voting block of their own. The girls are not allowed to wear pants. Um, they had this whole show where their oldest son was marrying a girl that he, I think, only like just met and their first kiss was on their wedding day. It's this very puritanical uh, way of life. Like, and there's, there's blogs, if you look up things like escaping quiverful or no longer quivering, things like that. Um, it's, it's really interesting. It's kind of scary. And a lot of people really don't like the fact that it's been given this kind of mainstream attention through shows like 19 Kids and Counting. There was another one that I saw an ad for when I was watching Escaping Polygamy. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of fascinating. And again, with the whole women are basically property, really sickening. Let's yeah. burn it down. Yeah, let's burn it down. <laughs> okay. I think... I, I was having this idea the entire time what if the way what if their like media expression is they put out all of these like heartwarming and entertaining like the Brady Bunch meets Scooby Doo <laughs> cartoons and movies and everything that like have these parents who run into problems and their giant like horde of kids are constantly using like their abilities to get them out of it so my question for you then is how would the youthful offenders uh, or the players play into this? Would they be like child actors? I mean, at least some somebody has to be a child actor with that setup. Maybe like we're all part of one of these shows okay. or a couple of us are. Okay. 
Uh, Michelle, I haven't heard too runaways. much from you. Uh, yeah. I'm just taking it all in. Okay. <laughs> um, no, because it. <clears throat> um, Free dive into the weird. The, the one of the things that um, really got me is like with that quiver movement, and this is something that I actually know some things about. One of the things about them is they are the champions of homeschooling and school choice. And if you've noticed this big wave of, oh, the homeschool and school choice, and they try to wrap it in this, it's actually that quiver movement. It is actually keeping them home. And yeah, we're teaching them math and history, but it's the history according to this one book. And it's... Um, and we're making sure they don't run into any other kids who find, think differently. Yes. Find the books. They're infuriating. Yeah. And I actually have a, a relative who is like purposefully keeping their kids out of the school system so they can actually start to do this. Um, yeah. And it's awful. And there's like nothing, you know, we, you know, we can't do anything about it. But it, it's, it's very, yeah, it's like that whole media education you know one message they wrap it in one message but they're really doing something else underneath okay this entire setup is going to be us getting pissed at something so we can burn it down right yes. so yeah it's, uh, this is going to be so cathartic yeah basically <laughs> Uh, also, I kind of hate you all a little bit because I have to embody this. And, <laughs> um, most of you have met me in person and know that I am uh, very much uh, not any of these things. Um, so this is going to be a really fun challenge for me. Okay. Well, again, it's it's the whole the nicest people play the worst villains. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to open up a document and take some notes while you guys talk about things that make you the most angry, things you would like most to burn down. <laughs> Monopolies. <laughs> Monopolies and duopolies. Are we talking the game? Because I could definitely burn down a game of Monopoly. <laughs> I've only that's just our that's the result of a game of Monopoly. Yeah, I, I have only ever played one game of Monopoly that didn't end in a fist fight. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that, uh, that sounds like Monopoly, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm talking, uh, I'm talking business, and I'm talking specifically in this context about, like, Disney's uh, growing Monopoly. Like snatching up everything they can when it comes to uh media licenses you know if the uh if the corporation or the authority is working through a media corporation then it seems like maybe one of the things that they try to do to gain power is uh, uh sorry i know we're talking about the things that piss us off but that that's where my mind leads okay no, so, that yeah, makes like, sense. if they're if they're trying to pass themselves off as like a family, you know, a, a wholesome alternative to Disney. Yeah, the religious well, Disney that's everywhere. Which I listen to. I listen to a podcast called God Awful Movies that makes fun of really bad religious movies. Not necessarily Christian, but most of them are. And there's a whole branch of networks and stuff that are specifically trying to be like the religious alternative to X. And so I could very easily see like you know, whatever our authority is trying to be the wholesome alternative to Disney or network television or, well, yeah, the Disney, Disney multi-branching into everything. Well, and let's like the mental image that's being summoned for me is this is going to be in the future, however far in the future. Um, so I'm thinking that this corporate media entity has control of various pop culture kind of licenses so like how disney owns marvel now um they can put subliminal messages into those shows and movies and <clears throat> excuse me uh other media outlets through these very popular things and that would be something that rightly pisses me off <laughs> 
like if you started seeing Scientology through Marvel movies, or if you started seeing uh, the Mormon movement through uh, like the Arrowverse as this grand positive heroic thing. Johnny Quest starring L. Ron Hubbard. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Lauren, what are you thinking? Um, sort of in that line of like a big multimedia push, a really blatant, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to put it, like a health grab. Uh, one of the things that I've seen is there's this there's this sort, this sort of movement among certain sects of people to say that, oh, all of your health problems, whether they're physical or mental, are because you aren't faithful or yeah. all this enough. And, and we can make you better. And we can make you better. It's only through us that, yeah, it, there's something wrong with you. We're the ones who can fix it. And if you're not fixed yet, it's because you aren't this enough. And that's a whole thing with a lot of cults. And it makes me angry. And it's, it's horrifying. It's victimizing. It's infuriating. Um, this is my catchphrase now, but let's burn it down. Let's, let's burn it down. Let's burn it down. <laughs> All so tough cocktails are easy to make, you know? <laughs> So are they starting to move either into trying to take over the education system or are they trying to influence politics or how do we... I mean, you kind of, if we start off with media, I mean, you start off with one thing and it's like a spider, it branches, well, not a spider, maybe more like a fungus where the rhizomes branch out into everything. They're trying, they're going for education that. with like a magic school bus thing. Like, and, it's the Magic's homeschool bus. Yeah, and like you said, <laughs> Michelle, with the textbooks and stuff, like, oh, here's our family-friendly uh, homeschooling alternatives. It's, oh, look, isn't it fun? And it's actually branched into some states actually have their own version of history where, like, they don't do slavery and stuff. Like, they've I'm rewritten. I'm from oh, Texas. I yeah. know that. Louisiana's <laughs> doing that. Uh, like students have actually sued the state of Louisiana saying we need textbooks that are actually factual. <laughs> so maybe some things like that. Okay. You mean the South didn't win the war? <laughs> I used to drive to work behind a truck every day that had a big sticker all across the back that said the South will rise again. And every day it was a test of my patience not to ram into it. I don't think Burn I can't it down. Patients. Sorry, food arrived. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. You food is and... happier than me ranting. <laughs> yeah. Eat your meat suit. <laughs> all right. So what I've got, um, and Michelle, did you have anything else to add? I feel like other people were jumping in on you. Sorry. No, no, no. No, I think I like the sort of media going into the education, especially with um, there are schools now that are just like they're giving computers to all their students, um, like free Chromebooks, free this. Um, there are classrooms that are actually becoming just computers. Mm -hmm. So this whole media thing, being able to really infiltrate the education system, especially if it's like in the future and it's just all like computers and tablets and stuff, it's completely yeah. plausible. Okay. Yeah, I really like that. Because like, um, without going too much into my day job, I work in education. And um, kids are getting just inundated by different media. Um, and like the classrooms are increasingly becoming uh, tech savvy classrooms, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because we live in a tech savvy future, but it could be um, it could be perverted very easily. And uh, so I see that. Um, I see that. And, uh, you know, um, because rain's on mute, I'm going to say it. Let's burn it down. Let's burn it down. <laughs> Sorry, right. chewing, chewing. You're okay. You're okay. Let's I got you. It down. <laughs> it's okay. I got you covered. All right. So um, based on that, 
I think we are probably at the point where our authority needs a name. Got to be something family friendly. What's uh? What's the name of the villain from Snow Crash? Uh, Bob something. Oh, oh, geez. I haven't watched it in a couple months. I don't even know what that is. So, uh, um, it's uh, Neil wait, Stephen. Touch. Wait, watch. Um, were you talking Snowpiercer or Snow Crash? Snow Crash. Snow Crash. Okay. Uh, hang on. Google the frantic sound nope. of googling. Yeah, what were we just talking about? About being inundated with tech. Yep. Uh. <clears throat> hmm. Uh, come on, come on. L. Bob Reif. Right. Totally not L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> Okay, so whatever name we come up with has to start with L. <laughs> but it's got to be something, like, cutesy, I think. Because, like, if you're marketing it to, like, preschool and elementary age kids, it's got to be something fun. Like, like, hello, education, or something like that. I think we're supposed we're too old for that, though. You are, but like, but like what Disney does, you have like when they're young preteens yeah. and teens that are feeding the propaganda to the younger kids. Okay, uh, so are we? Is our authority overtly Christian, or do we want it to be some sort of other thing? Uh, or do I, we want it to maybe seem like it's Christian and then, oh, whoops, they're worshipping, like, uh, <laughs> Skippy the Space Frog. Blood for the blood god. <laughs> <laughs> Zazel. Um, I mean, I don't think it necessarily has to be Christian. Christian's a good fit, but... Because, I'm just asking, because I'm looking up the names of a bunch of like production companies and stuff and most of them are like some sort of vague reference to scriptures or vague reference to biblical characters or just some sort of vague like uplifting and praise and that sort of thing. Well by that token I would probably go with the the Babel organization or Babel Industries or something. Or something to the Tower of Babel. Yeah, yeah, something even more like New Testament scripture would be something like Lion and Lamb. Oh. Uh, oh, God, and they would have like a would... little lion. And oh, God, it reminds me of Twilight. Then... <laughs> I, have, I have a mental image of it friend. being the Lion and the Lamb, and then we're the wolves. Also. Well, that's... <gasps> That's how it would be marketed, yeah. Where it's just like there are wolves all around you. Who will Put protect your faith the lamb? The lion and the lamb. Oh man. Yeah, not to not to like force this on you guys, but I, I do wonder. like that. Okay, <laughs> I do really like that. Yeah. Plus, it already gives us kind of a cool like gang name. And a cute little lion mascot and a cute little lamb mascot. Although, Gosh. again, it really does remind me of Twilight. The the merchandising profits on those lion and lamb dolls are Oh, my God. Yeah. It would be like Mickey and Minnie. Yeah. yeah. And now we have our first official, like, if you guys want to do um, fan art for us, uh, the lion and the lamb. Um, if somebody wants to come up with a logo for us, that would be amazing. Oh, my God. What if the lion and the lamb that we're worship that th they're talking about, it's like, oh, it's this vaguely Christian thing. No, it's actually, like, some sort of weird, like, lion space god thing. Oh, nice. I like it. <laughs> I, I like, like it. the idea of us being the wolf pack. Oh yeah, no, totally. We're the wolf pack. <laughs> oh my god, I am. Uh, I'm from North Carolina. Well, not from North Carolina. I'm living in North Carolina, and one of our <clears throat> college uh, basketball teams is the Wolf Pack. So they have a little sign, and they go, "Wolf Pack." <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's really all I can think of when you guys say wolf pack, but um, <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> but like the lions, guys, what if we got to fight Voltron? <gasps> if it's space lions, we might have oh to fight Voltron. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be amazing. All right. We're actually worshiping Voltron. <laughs> and we have to cool. get like wolf robots and make Voltron. <laughs> Tony, Tony, do you know what this means? Are you reading my mind? It is it is the wolf time. Wolf time! Wolf oh, time! Yeah, there's this thing online called this kid apparently made this thing called <gasps> Wolf Newt. Wolf Newt! Yes! Wolf Newt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, kid, whoever invented Wolf Newt, we love you right now. And I'm sorry I can't remember your name. Yeah. Oh, we did it, guys. We got there. We got the Wolf Newt. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So um, oh I think. Did Wolf we just is, win this game? We, we did. Win. Yeah. We just won this game. Um, so, for people that may not necessarily be aware of Wolf Newt, um, Wolf Newt is a holiday invented by a Tumblr poster's uh, child. And um, the idea is that, like, you go outside and you howl at the moon and you eat roast meat and you make a cake that looks like a full moon and you do, like, wolf related activities. So I think... And you're, like, kind to dogs and stuff. Yeah, and you're, like, kind to puppies. Um, so I think there needs to be a... If we're the wolf pack, um, then we would celebrate Wolf Newt. But I don't think... Wolf Newt and Lupercalia. Oh my god, you nerd. Yeah, Lupercalia is... The original Valentine's Day in ancient Rome as a festival of fertility. Uh, you used to go around um, flogging each other with bloody wolf hides to try to encourage fertility. So every year I say I'm going to get like fake fur and dip it in red paint and start just beating the crap out of people with it. And every year I forget. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. We can so probably leave that out of the youthful offenders game. <laughs> Why? awkward <laughs> i mean enough. so i think that there would be kind of a press towards like valentine's day being a major holiday for for wolf and lamb um uh, because of like lion the fertility and lamb. Yeah, lion, lion, and lamb. Lamb. lion and lamb sorry uh for lion and lamb i have it written down too i'm staring right at it and my brain's still like <laughs> Dirt, wolf i think you're um, stuck on wolf newt for I'm stuck on wolf newt for heterosexual couples who are heteronormative, gen normative stuff. Yes. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Like there is there is very much a right way to celebrate Valentine's Day. No uh no queers allowed. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's a that's them trying to control the freedom. Yep, because like it goes back to uh what we said the original victim was, which is freedom. Um so this is a good way. I like this. I super like this. Um, so let's see. Let me go back to the sheet and see where I can record this and how I can record this. Um, so the authority name is Lion and Lamb. And let's look back at the uh, needs really quickly. So their needs is to monopolize media, right? Mm -hmm. And then start to go into education. Maybe just monopolize culture? Culture through media? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and what is their kind of like, other goal like are they actually worshiping voltron lion god and they want to bring about the kingdom of lion god on earth or like how's that you know is that i like that. that i like it too but is it something we can reveal like later on um yes i would think it would be something like xenu where you don't really know it until you're really deep in and then you know it like do, yeah i, I mean, see what I you're asking up front. 
Like, no, um, there are going to be some things that I, as the authority, come up with on my own. Um, but basically, any ideas that you can give me as kind of plot seeds would be great. I mean, we've already, like, bandied about the space lion god, and it sounds awesome. And we, I, I feel like we'll be upset if we don't go in that direction. <laughs> I will. I know I will. You mean they're actually they're actually following the teachings of the Chronicles of Narnia, and Aslan yeah, somebody... is their god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, everything's fine. Those are the two directions: is Aslan and Voltron. <laughs> somebody, somebody took their bedtime reading as a kid a little too seriously. No. Um. Yeah, fun story about propaganda being, like, super ingrained is that I read the Chronicles of Narnia as a kid growing up in a Catholic home, and I read it as a kid and just kind of blindly accepted everything, and it's just like, oh yeah, it's just the thing in fantasy for people to sacrifice themselves for the good of others. And then I read it again as, um, as like, in my late teens, and I was like, oh my god, Jesus Christ is the lion! <laughs> 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 and, like, it's that thing where it's like, again, it's the subliminal messaging that like kids, kids are smart and they pick up on it, but they don't know that they pick up on it. Yeah. Until much later. So, um, yeah. They don't have the context to know what they're picking up on. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so maybe that feeds back into the, uh, the Monopoly thing and the Lion and Lamb already have the rights to the Chronicles of Narnia and Voltron. There's a term for this. It's, um... I forget what it's called, but it's when you slowly get people, at, like, uh, used to an idea. Acclimatized? I think so, but it's it's specifically in terms of, like, cults and stuff. Oh, that I don't know. Where, oh, uh, God, I was just listening to this, I was just, with I was listening to the Escaping Nexium podcast, and again, it's like the slow, everyone that, always brings up the frog boiling yeah. metaphor. Yeah. But it's that yeah. slow introduction of ideas and you get somebody it's normalizing hello there you go and that's why they start with children's stuff because i mean you don't start with adults adults i mean yeah you could but why do that when it's so much easier to just indoctrinate generations of children mm -hmm. yeah oh 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 Right, it's time myself. for the catch. Yeah, it's time for the catchphrase again. Burn it down. Let's burn it down. <laughs> Let's burn it down. <laughs> burn it down. That's gonna be that's gonna be on a t-shirt somewhere. It's gonna be Wolfpack, and then underneath that, let's burn it down. <laughs> we need a laugh track for let's burn it down. Oh god. Let's burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um so I've got a good I've got a decent page of notes. Um, let's go back to, um, so needs, and let's see what is next. This is a really monstrous system. <laughs> I know! I love it! I love it so much! <laughs> um. Just wait till we get to, like, breaking things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so I guess my next question is how far in the future are we setting this or are we setting it in an alternate reality where like space god lion has overtaken Christianity as like the cultural touchstone for America? Also, do we want to set it in America? I have so many questions. Part of my head just went, let's set it in the Independent Republic of California. <laughs> I mean, I would I would think that we would probably be in like the Bible Belt or Texas, like the South. Maybe the South Rose again. Oh I'm God. Sorry. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <I'm gone, Morgan. laughs> I just watched all the Southerners cringe. <laughs> yeah. You can tell where we live by how, how much our faces fall. Yeah. Like Lauren and I are like, oh shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, my ass up in Seattle's like, what? <laughs> Look, I, have, I have a neighbor with a combo American 
Confederate flag. So Ooh, that yeah. is horrifying. Talk about confused about the concept. Yeah, it's like they try to they were traitors that tried to form their own country. Like, come on. Okay, anyway. Yeah. But maybe <coughs> how do we want to do it? <laughs> oh my god. I super I'm... want to burn down <laughs> the South Rising again. <laughs> I kind of can we. I kind of want this to be more a little more cyberpunkish. So can we mix that. Like Ooh. there was another war towards the future. Okay. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Um, so that's so, pretty handmade still. That is pretty. And it can even still. be. Yeah, and it. it can oh my god! Maybe that's why there's that no more not... Disney. <laughs> oh. Oh my nice. god! What if we set it in Florida? <laughs> Oh god, in like the ruins of like the Disney Empire. <laughs> well, and another thought that occurred is what if instead of it being one side or the other side one, what if it's at a at a standstill and there's this section of North America that is this new place? Part of the ceasefire agreement was splitting up who gets to air what media and shows. Maybe this is like, oh, we're completely neutral, and this is why they're getting so much airtime. Yes, because, like, instead of news, everything is filtered through, like, lion and lamb. Uh, oh, it's so non-offensive. Yes. Yeah. We don't air news. It's just, it's so non-offensive. And look, our, 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 our books don't even, it's so nonpartisan. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Why would so, you even mention these unpleasant things? We don't. Yeah, like, with so much death and destruction in the world, isn't it better to think about happier things? At Lion and Lamb, we bring you what you want to know, not what you need to know. Think of it like a trip back to your childhood. Oh, oh, the good old days of your childhood. Doo -doo. Yes, the good old days that never really existed, but we're going to tell you existed. And here's a nostalgic remake, reboot, and everything, and let you know how beautiful and perfect it was. So I'm hoping I'm, we're getting a lot of sound bites out of this. I'm, <laughs> I'm posting something else into the Discord. Um, so, if you need sound bites of you know advertisements, again, I do voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> so I really like the idea of it being cyberpunk but like instead of it being like you know 80s-esque cyberpunk what if it was like 1950s-esque cyberpunk Ooh, ooh. so I... like with like you know the housewives in their like in their swing dresses um and like but also like an earpiece so, so like if we have like a didn't medication shame Yes. Okay. Um, what about like the Doctor Strangelove kind of uh, Cold War scare during that time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it would that be like, could be. but it's like a Cold War within the U.S. Oh God. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. It's it's scary how much this is feeding into a character idea I had. <laughs> Good. Um. Yeah, actually, same here. <laughs> I didn't think about it until you said it, but yeah. Yeah, just like you're living you're living in such a technologically advanced future that it can look like whatever it wants to. So it looks like a uh, suburban 1950s. Not even the fallout excuse of, well, we got bombed and it kind of stuck this way. But <laughs> no, we liked it. We liked it. No, we liked it this way. Uh, you know, without without the immigrants and the women's getting uppity and the queerdos, like. <laughs> Fedoras are back, man. Oh, God. <laughs> they, never, they never went away. I actually have uh, one around here somewhere. Oh, my gosh. So, uh so I think I have a good idea on the setting. Um, so let's um, actually 
go ahead and take a break in a couple of minutes. Um, and then I think we'll come back with character creation. But before we do that, uh, I want to just run over, like run over what we have done up to this point to make sure everybody's on the same page and that we are all still feeling like, fuck it, let's burn it down. Um, Cause I mean, I know some people are on board but I wanna make sure that everybody is equally invested and like fucking hates this idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Lion and Lamb is a business monopoly that started out in media and is moving into education. Um, they have been buying up licenses and appropriating uh, properties from of you know of various uh, other books and movies and comic books and stories, and are kind of refitting uh, the nostalgia of our childhoods into something that fits the lion and lamb agenda. Uh, it's also very much a uh, branded lifestyle. So it's like, if you're not drinking lion and lamb supplement juice, you're gonna be unhealthy and it's your fault. Um, and then um, kind of playing into the media and the education thing, like the magic homeschool bus uh, <laughs> with uh, not necessarily fact-based education um, in a shiny, happy packaging that is beamed directly into your children's tablets. What is that giant glowing lion in the sky and why does it provide us with light? <laughs> yeah. And then um, kind of the character ideas being the uh, teenagers who have been raised in this uh, have been a mouthpiece for this and <clears throat> are now realizing just how fucked up it is. I also just have the phrase, what if we have to fight robots written down? <laughs> <laughs> so that might be a thing <laughs> I'm not hearing a no <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then having this being set in the the second cold war so the intra US cold war and the neutral zone is set up to be like a 1950s utopia how am I doing Sounds good. Horrific. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, um, like, where's the guillotine? Yes. Yes. We, who's got the blade? Let's make the guillotine. Let's just do this. Yeah, let's do this. But um, the fun part of this is just going to be um, the PCs, uh, the youthful offenders um, trying to break out of this because, like, a lot of it is going to be like you are fighting against yourself and that own and your own like Cole's mentality of being raised in this. So I'm really, really excited about this. Does anybody have any other quick questions, comments, hopes, fears, desires before we go to break? I do have one. Like, it's a it's another visual of what this would look like. Okay. Where to to introduce the tech element, people would use people who could afford it would use uh, augmented reality visors so that when they're mm -hmm. looking around, they're seeing like all of the neon signs and the guys and dolls and they're, they're seeing all these augmentations around them, but people that can't afford it, they're just seeing dirty streets and old buildings. Ooh, I really like that. Ooh. What if it's the opposite though? Like what if the uh, everybody who's you know, poor and downtrodden has to see <clears throat> giant, horrifying neon uh, things, and then everybody else can pay and have those removed and get to see like beautiful architecture, nano crafted, whatever spirals and obelisks and whatnot. That could be the systems of control thing. Yeah. Like, based on how much you like, whatever your subscription plan is that's what you get to see. That's what you get to experience. And it's also yeah. how they track you. All right. So I think we're going to ruminate on that for a little bit. Um, are we okay to go to break? Yes. 
All right, excellent. We're gonna go to break. I'll see you guys back in like 10 minutes. So we'll be back at 9.30. Sound good? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, 9.30 EST. Sorry, I forget that people are in different time zones. <laughs> Yeah, I'll come back in in like an hour, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
right, we are back. All right, so before we move on to character creation, there are just a couple more things that I need to do uh, to record on our little dystopia sheet here. Um, so the first one is what rating do we want this game? Do we want, um, because basically, like, if I were playing this game by myself, it would have an R rating because I say the word fuck a lot. Um, <laughs> and there's probably going to be some violence. Um, but how how do other people feel? What do you think our rating should be? Um, yeah, where, where are we at with this? I am also fine with R because I also say fuck a lot. <laughs> And we, we keep uh, saying burn it down, so I'm thinking <laughs> R. Because... I'm thinking at some point we might have violence. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it gets robots, who knows? Yeah. I feel like if you're going to do a story about the seedy underbelly of a dystopia, then, then you kind of have to go R because they stop at PG-13 for a reason. And part of that reason is to, you know, hide Okay, you kind of cut out for a second there. Oh, no. no. How dare. Yeah, my, uh, my internet had a hiccup there. Um, what, uh, what did I stop at? Uh, you said it stops at PG-13 for a reason. And that reason is hiding truths of the world, like hiding what exactly they're doing and, you know, covering it with a nice little rating that everybody can fit under. Okay. So um, are we okay with, um, so one of the things that I'm just going to say straight up is that there will be no, um, there will be no domestic violence type things in this. Uh, it's not something I'm comfortable with. It's not something I'm going to push. It's not something I'm going to allow uh, just for my own sanity. Um, are there any other things that I should be aware of that we are not going to include? Any kind of sexual violence or assault? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, child trafficking. Okay. Also poaching. Okay. Unless they're hunting down Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure his head's on a wall somewhere. I'm but... sorry, Disney. Don't assassinate me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that list. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'm going to say, um, I think I said it during our initial aborted session, but um, <clears throat> if at any time um, I cross a line or another player crosses a line, um, you can just say red or make an X with your hands. Um, and we will know to stop, regroup, and go in a different direction. Because my, like, I know that we are dealing with some touchy things here, but I don't want anybody's mental health to suffer. Thank so you. So is, is everybody good with that? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, um, I will um, add a tab to the Google Sheets that we're working on, um, and we'll we'll make a red list of you know everything that I know not to include. Okay, so um, the next thing that we have to do as a group is uh, everybody gets to come up with a system of control uh, because um, an authority this skilled is not only going to have one system of control; they're going to have at least I don't know how many players do we have four. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everybody take a moment to think um, I know somebody uh, I think it was Rain already talked about the augmented reality visors mm -hmm. uh, and that can be um, that can be definitely a uh, method of control because you know as Lauren said you can gain track people with it um, <clears throat> And kind of to that end, I wrote a little blurb while we were on break to kind of give you guys something to think about while you are thinking about uh, your systems of control that you're going to suggest. So 
In a future where reality is subjectively based on your subscription tier, an ad-free experience is only for the wealthy. Will you choose to live in the neon drunk reality of life or the manufactured utopia you can pay for? Lion and Lamb Media will happily customize your experience for you for a nominal fee. Tune into one of our many educational programs to give your child the best education at the best price, free. Oh, that indoctrination. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so you know how they have Nielsen cable boxes where they track like you know how you've watched how many hours of this so they can track ratings Mm -hmm. something like that but like not to track ratings like hours watched yeah hours watched and like oh you've watched this many you get rewards or you haven't watched this many uh we're going to up your fees to make up for whatever something like that okay it's like a combination of a rewards card and those uh those insurance gizmos you plug into your car to track how you drive yeah the nielsen box of shittiness I'm kind of torn between systems of control. Um, and I'm going to use one that actually has been on my mind a lot recently, food. Um, okay. Like, uh, you know, like how uh, Chick-fil-A uh, does their shit in supporting uh, anti-gay rights organizations and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, part of the way uh, Lion and Lamb create a cultural touchstone for their programs to hit deeper is providing cheap and nourishing food. And, you know, nobody's ever really been able to figure out exactly where it comes from. You know, they their supply chain is closed, but you can't deny that the kids who are eating this food are, you know, healthy and nourished. And whenever they watch a Lion and Lamb product, you know, it refers back to this food that's tasty and uh, helps them grow big and strong. It's Soylent Green. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) It might be Space Lion meat or something. (laughs) All those Space Lambs. Space Lambs. Try it with mint sauce. Space mint sauce. Um. This is what became of NASA. Yeah. <laughs> NASA went for profit. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, God, you don't know how depressing that is. Yeah. Since, since we're doing education, testing as a status symbol. Ooh. Nice. I hate it. I love it. I hate it, though. <laughs> yeah. I, j- I just had a moment of, you're doing great, darling. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so testing is a status symbol for what exactly? Like, is it is it kind of like, uh, oh, well, I got an 1800 on my SE- SAT is like blown up to like a million? Or is it something else? It's a rewards tier. Yeah, it, it's like if your children, because we're going after children, mm-hmm. do so well on their test then perhaps you get more reward points and you get like a month free of a special tier or something. Oh God, can you imagine how much pressure that'd be on the kid? Well, there's no pressure, not if you watch Lion and Lamb Entertainment. Yeah, you know, they'll take all the pressure away and you'll be able to perform for your family. And especially when you eat the food. I want to burn it all down. (laughs) (laughs) Yay! <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Um, authority symbol. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, 
So I think we're going to do authority figures and brutalities a little bit later. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to character creation because I want to get some of that done tonight. So um, basically your Um, let me get to that on the, do, 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 do. sorry. Okay. Um, so youthful offenders come in clicks. What drew you together and why do you stick together? Um, Write a description of your click and give it a name if you feel like it. We already did. It's the wolf pack. Um, so everybody has a couple of like character ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the click. Um, so why are you guys together? Before we even. Um, Do we want to do the child stars thing? Well, and I can, I, we can even make it broader than that. It could be that we all recognize that our rights are being taken away, like uh, freedom to create something or freedom of autonomy or freedom to love who you love. We all have a stake in that and we recognize it as being taken away. Yeah, but how would you find each other? Internet. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that lion and lamb controls? That is a good question. They can't control it so much that people don't need it. Right? We might all be together on the same project. Now, remember, you guys are ages 12 to 17. <clears throat> same school. What if you guys are in the same testing cohort? Hmm. And so, like, you have been set up for years as competitors to each other. And you, one of you or more than one of you, realizes how bullshit that is and brings the others around to that idea. I'm good with that. I mean, don't let me... Like, this is actually the part where I should probably just shut up and let you guys talk. I honestly couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> no, it kind of makes sense if you have, like, you know, in Japan, they have, and I think in China, they have those those special, like, testing schools, the testing classes and stuff like that. And it would make sense in something where tests, so much pressure is put on tests to, you know, get stuff that you would have these special testing classes or testing schools, especially if it's. <clears throat> You know, even if it's if it's a homeschool environment, uh, it's little testing pods where you go to have, you know, to make sure that you're learning the stuff. And socializing. Yeah. So it's maybe like a once a week thing where, you know, you during the week you go and you're doing your, you know, community service and your stuff for the for the organization and all that stuff and then once a week you meet up to the testing pod and okay spend a whole day doing like practice drills and things what if we're in like a breakfast club kind of testing cohort where we're all not succeeding in school to the extent that the authority has tapped us to do other things and that's how we're succeeding in getting points for our family like they're using that leverage on us to do things that they want kids to do, but kids shouldn't necessarily be doing. We have a particular set of talents. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially if we were like, well, I don't know what y'all's characters' concepts are yet, but my character is, like, I, I want my character to be a former, essentially child star uh, who oh, Sam, is I'm no longer. Active. Yeah, who is no longer. Um, so is now having to do something else to kind of be worthy in the organization. Uh, I'm thinking active child star, like currently on the rise in the, uh, in the medias and whatnot. So I'm going to 
uh, derail for just a second here and um, reference a series of books written by Shauna McGuire um, <laughs> called Velveteen. Yes! Yes, where um, I see Lauren's heard of it. Uh, I've read them. They are yes, good. They're so good. But anyway, it's basically the idea that like when kids manifest superpowers, um, they're recruited by uh, basically Disney and get um, the parents sign over their rights in exchange for like a hefty severance bonus, basically. Oh and the kids... Oh, awful it's yeah and the kids are raised to be basically walking talking action figures <clears throat> yeah it's and the x-men meets suicide squad it's sort of like if the disney channel like imagine the disney channel like right now with like all the child stars plus the old hollywood system plus superheroes X -Men. yeah yeah which yeah they've got three of three on that yeah. So thought, this could be so. like maybe like a like a studio school, a studio testing school or something. Yeah, like I you're mean, I want to ask the question, are we going full X-Men on this? I'm not opposed to going full X-Men on this. <laughs> Drinking the super juice is giving us powers. <laughs> or something. Like, maybe we're some kind of uh, X-Gene mutation. Like, literally, just X-Men, or... Honestly, this just don't, this only feeds into my character concept. <laughs> what if, what, what is if your... They, what if they uh, were I was trying to breed, like, the person? That... Sorry, what was... Yeah. I interrupted. No, it's fine. That was actually... I'm derailed now, but that was a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, so what was your character um, concept, Rain? Yeah. The direction I was thinking of going with my character was is is originally a uh, digital graffiti artist um where I would use augmented reality to just basically pirate images and recreate them. Um but, but if I were to take that to full superpower effect, then I would think that maybe I wouldn't need a uh, augmented reality visor i could just be in augmented reality and i could just touch the digital web that would be cool that's badass basically just being a technomancer okay like i'm not i'm not opposed to y'all having superpowers as long as you realize that you aren't the only people with superpowers right mm -hmm. the space line <laughs> god giveth and taketh away. <laughs> but, yeah, like, what if, like, the whole goal of the space line experiment was to breed beings worthy of the space line god? And that's why they're trying the whole quiverful thing. Oh, man. That's so good. And even the whole space line thing, that, that is an actual entity that's trying to gather unto itself. Okay, so that I, I was going to kind of say this, but I'm just going to put it out there. I was thinking that I would be uh, like a wolf shapeshifter. Like the, uh, the nice. wolf pack thing put me in mind mm -hmm. of like, you know, werewolves and furries and shapeshifting. And like I'm on their teen wolf reproduction and it's like a super closed set. Like, only the most trusted uh, technicians and everything can film it because there's no special effects. It's just me. And the lesson they're teaching is that the the wolf stuff is super bad and you have to contain the wolf. But I just want to be the wolf. Okay. All right. I can see it. I can see it. Um, let's see. Um, Michelle, how you how you feeling over there? I'm intrigued. Okay. <laughs> I'm intrigued with the whole superhero idea. So are we are we sort of like the outcast superhero pod? Like are we like the top ones or we're the ones like kinda they don't know yet? I mean that's up to y'all. I kinda that's figured that Yeah, I kinda figured that we're we're not necessarily outcasts, but there's a question mark next to our name. And it's not like they can just cut us loose because we have these powers. They have to have some way to control us. So, 
So I'm going to set the stage and then let you guys run from there. So basically, Lion and Lamb Corporation uh, basically bought you from your parents um, at a tender young age, um, maybe six or seven, and um, has been solely responsible for your schooling, your training, your um, upbringing. Um, they monitor what you eat. They monitor what you watch. They monitor um, basically everything. And now that you are a teenager, you are kind of a rising star for them. Um, you are um, you are their hopes for like the next season's lineup. So you have been put together into a testing pod because you still have to take the tests. Otherwise, how would it be fair to the other children? Um, wink, wink. Um, Lucille Bluth wink there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it felt appropriate. Um, and you are uh, being monitored even more carefully right now because you are in the running for next season. So like a fucked up Truman Show? Like a fucked up Truman Show, but also American Gladiator and America's Got Talent. With a dash of uh, Avengers Earth, Earth's Mightiest Heroes thrown in. Hmm. If I'm totally wrong, please tell me that I'm talking out of my ass. No, nah, this sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, um, does everybody have a PDF of the book? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I sent that, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, I'm sorry. I, mean, I bought I it, but yeah. To, uh, <laughs> I have to nerd correct myself for a second. Um, not Avengers, New Warriors. Uh, the yes. team that had the reality <laughs> show that led to the I think it was New Haven or somewhere in Connecticut. Incident. Yeah, it's New Haven. HRA. Yeah. Okay. All right. So based on the systems of control, based on the um, idea that we have, um, it looks like everybody has kind of a character concept. Um, Michelle, I haven't really heard yours. I was kind of like I have a couple, but I wanted to wait to everybody else because I don't want to have ever. I don't want the whole team to have like one certain trait. So like I have a couple, so I, I wanted to hear like what everybody else was before. I okay, started. so we've got uh, we've got digital graffiti mancer. We've got um, we've got a uh, wolf shapeshifter, uh, teen heartthrob. Um, Lauren, what were you thinking? I'm not sure about superpowers yet. I'm still trying to think that one out. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to have everything uh, planned out. Like, And also your superpowers could have nothing to do with the rest of your character concept. You could just be someone who just occasionally bursts into flame. Like... <laughs> yeah, like I have all the rest of my the Let's stuff about my down. character figured out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's burn it down with the heat from my body. I have all the rest of the stuff about my character figured out, but I, I don't know superpower yet. Okay, well, tell me the rest of it. Okay, so what I have figured is that my character was on some sort of show where she was like some sort of like some sort of like Bible man or something, some sort of equivalent, where she was like the cute little, you know, spunky child sidekick um, with whatever her superpower was, something cute and uh tv friendly or maybe not with this superpower because they didn't want to showcase that yet and wait until she's older or whatever but she was the cute little but then uh as she got older it turned out that not only does she have the superpower she has some sort of actual like genetic condition right now i'm thinking ehlers danlos just because i have it but for whatever reason just whatever it was suddenly She's not family friendly anymore. Mm. And so. Because she challenges the narrative that, like, if you eat the good lion and lamb food, you'll never yeah. be sick again. So now she is moved out of the spotlight 
and they've been telling everyone, oh, she went off to do missionary work or whatever. And like all of a okay. sudden, that's what got her just doubting the system. Just everything's like <clears throat> this. I I did everything right. I I was a believer. I did everything right. And Can I make a suggestion for superpowers? Yes. Think poison ivy. <gasps> I love plants. <laughs> <laughs> Like the 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 good girl kind of homesy vibe would have been she could make flowers. Yes, and and that would have been beautiful. But then the vines started growing and her skin chart started changing. That's perfect, and that it also kind of goes with Ehlers Danlos because there can be associated skin changes. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. So we've got uh, we've got kid poison ivy. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, Graffiti Mancer, um, who can tap into the augmented reality without a visor. We've got the, uh, motherfucking wolf time, all the time, <laughs> uh, wolf shapeshifter. All right. Um, can I be the one where, like, they wanted someone really smart, but now they've got someone really smart, maybe that wasn't the way to go? Yes, I love it. That would be me. I love it. I love it a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, let's move on to... Let me see. Okay. So you have a name, an age, and a gender. Um, uh, and because you guys are, um, sorry, typing, um, I think that this sort of dystopia would not be one that tolerates people who are very obviously other. So like that plays into Lauren's character with like developing a skin condition, developing uh, Ehlers-Danlos. Um, um, I think that you have to at least present as a binary gender, even if that's not how you identify. And I hate putting that constraint on things because like, I'm non-binary. It feels really weird to be called she. Like, you know, I get that, but like if everybody's okay with it, I think it should be like you have to, for the sake of your career, visibly present as one gender, um, as you know, male or female. Is everybody okay with that? I don't want to erase anybody's identity. Like I don't want to, I don't want to be that person. Can we have it? And this is just pure lore wise, can we have it be that somebody presents a certain way but thinks of themselves another way? Yeah, no, definitely. Most definitely. Um, so when you fill out your character sheets, tell me uh, how you present and how you identify. Or just tell me how you present and how you identify and I'll record it. <clears throat> um, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see. So everybody needs to pick a name and an age and a uh, <laughs> visible gender and inward gender, I guess. <laughs> when we pick names, can we go by an alias? Um, go by what your uh, name is like billed as in the credits. That's difficult. <laughs> so Yeah, this is going to be the hardest part. Well, okay, what let's... Are Sorry. Let's skip names for now. Let's just pick ages and um, how you identify and how you present. Okay. And I'm just going to put the player names in for now. So, uh, Rain, how old are you? 14. 14. Okay. And then presents. Presents male. Identifies? Non-binary. Okay. All right, Tony, how old are you? Uh, 15. Okay. 
And how do you present? Mail. Okay. How do you identify? Mail. Okay. All right, Lauren, how old are you? Uh, 15. Okay. And how do you present? Female. And how do you ID? Female. Okay. And Michelle. 13. <laughs> I love it. I present as a girl. Okay. But I know that gender is a social construct that has changed over the course of history and so on and so forth. And that's why I'm in trouble. <laughs> IDs as smarty pants. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to pick three looks. Those are physical characteristics about you, and they should be like two or three words each. Um, and I guess we'll just go back around the table. So, uh, one sec. Ah! I broke everything. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're fine. Uh, <laughs> Google Sheets is occasionally really hard to work with. Um, okay, so uh, Rain, um, can you give me at least one characteristic that you, uh, like physical characteristic? Uh, da -da 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 scrawny. Okay. All right, do you want me to go around and come back to you? Sure. <laughs> or do you or do you have other other looks that you can uh, physical characteristics that you can provide right now? Yeah, come back around to me. Okay. Uh, Tony. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go full teen heartthrob with it. Uh, jet black hair, ice blue eyes, toothy grin. I'm just gonna rank teen heart. Throb for one of them. Um, okay. uh, shaggy hair. <laughs> shaggy hair. And what's your third one? Um, Toothy grin. Uh, that feels like kind of weird, but uh, yeah, toothy, like fangy. Okay, good. Long canines. Long canines. Awesome. Uh, Lauren. Um, long brown hair in front of face. Think like Violet from The Incredibles. Yep. Uh, I really liked what you said about like kind of uh, roots sort of growing through parts of her skin. Okay. So like root system skin? Yes. Like along her arms and legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh I can come back to you if you need me to. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. Uh short curly brown hair. Okay. Dress is, I don't know if plain is like the right, but it's just basic. You know what I okay. mean? Like, like she's not going to come in with the trends or anything like that. It's okay. Militarian. Yeah. It's just what she needs. Yeah. Uh, like plain Jane. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and your third one, do you have one yet? No. Okay, cool. Uh, coming back around to Rain. Okay, well, the the obvious one would be constant bedhead. Yes, I love it. <laughs> and then how weird can we get with appearance? Um, basically, uh, lion and lamb is going to chalk up your appearance to CGI. So you can okay. get as weird as you want. Because I'm thinking like, the ir my irises would be like electric blue, and my sclera would actually be a metallic gray. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just going to write that down as techie eyes. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into what that means a little bit more uh, later on. So, con so scrawny, constant bedhead, and techno eyes. Cool. Um, you might be like on promotional tours and all that jazz, like they may have you wear glasses mm -hmm. that, that hide it. But I think that that is a perfectly normal thing. Uh, well, not normal. I think that's and I figured that I figured that they would work a lot in the special effects department as the person that creates the effects. Mm -hmm. Realistically, I create backgrounds and I create worlds and stuff for people to play in. But as far as uh, actual application, I'd be probably credited with uh, special effects. Okay, gotcha. Um, and then back to Lauren, do you have your third one? Um, is usually sits kind of in a pretzel, like making herself very small, I think. Okay. Tries to make herself small. Takes up little space? Or like tries to be small? Just like, if there's a chair, like she Sweet. Chuck, like tucks herself in. Sweet, small kind of uncomfortably looking okay tries to like sits at the back of the room yeah 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 tries to be small got it yeah okay used to be a big personality now tries not to be noticed uh kind of playing off of what you said earlier uh do you want to go with the term shrinking violet <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. For the record, her name will not be Violet. I was about to say, like, her name has to be like Daisy or something. Her name is Grace. Grace. Okay. Grace under fire. Oh, sorry. <laughs> burn it all down. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> her name right. is Burn. Her last name is It All Down. <laughs> My uh, character's name is Blaze. What do they do? <laughs> <laughs> they have ice powers <laughs> alright and Michelle your last uh, um, she wears glasses no one really knows why but until you look at her she has larger than regular eyes and they're black like she has some white but like instead of like green eyes or blue eyes or whatever they're like black okay um she has betazoid eyes. I was going to go with big puppy eyes because they're <laughs> larger and black. <laughs> sure. Um, and also, you guys can go in and edit these later. I'm just writing down what we have for now. Um, uh, actually, can I, uh, can I switch one? Yeah. We, uh, instead of shaggy hair, uh, flashy dresser. Okay, I like it. All right. Um, the werewolf is going to be the talker of the group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. I'm not used to being in the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now let's look at our convictions. Well, I'm smart. <clears throat> so that one's obvious for me. Right. So the first three are closed. So uh, for means, you can be bad, cool, fast, smart, or tough. I am going with smart. Okay, yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. I'm thinking I'll go with fast. Okay. Um, I want to be cool, but I want to be the one wearing the leather jacket. Okay. Cool in a leather jacket. Yes. Uh, I want to be tough. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Now, never mind. I'll ask you that later. All right. Um, motive. 
Yeah, most kids respond to the authorities bullshit by politely doing what they're told. You don't, why not? Why do you care what happens to other people? What makes you so special? What the hell possesses you to put yourself in such dan danger? Outrage. All right, okay. if you're going outrage, I'm going thrills. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one second. Let me get back to the sheet. So Lauren, you're going outrage. Mm -hmm. Tony, you're going thrills. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go for pride. Pride. All right. I'm going thrills. <laughs> All right. And um, the other option is uh, optimism or altruism. Or you can pick one. Uh, you can pick one that somebody else has chosen. That's fine, too. I'm going to go with altruism. Okay, altruism. Gotcha. Altruism. All right, and now let's move on to opportunity. I want to be um, sneaky. <laughs> all right, so pretty, orphan, rich, sneaky, or trusted. So you want to be sneaky. Yeah. Trusted. Sneaky thrill seeker. <laughs> I want to be uh, trusted. Ooh, I love it. I think I kind of have to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Um, and uh, Michelle. I want to be orphan. Okay. So like... Everyone is kind of functionally an orphan because their parents have sold them out, but maybe your parents sold you out in like a particularly traumatic way. It could also be that you're a foundling. Yeah, you could also just like straight up come from an orphanage. Uh, um, I'm wondering if like perhaps my parents had certain genetic markers mm -hmm. and they actually sold me when I was very young Ooh. like more like two or younger okay so you have no memory of your parents yes gotcha all right cool i like that all right so the next one is open so you don't have to choose it off the list um uh, motives. How are you special? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Open. What kind of person are you? What's your specialty? How will you fight the authority? What's your high concept, basically? Hmm. My character's angry because she feels betrayed. Like, she genuinely bought into all this. Okay. And, like, she feels like she was used and tossed aside. So she's ashamed of herself and she's angry at them for making her feel this way. Ashamed and angry. To be tossed aside? Yeah. Uh, sheet, why aren't you working with me? All right, cool. Uh, who's next? Um, so the reason why, you know, I'm smart and I'm, you know, giving, because to me, it's like, I can see what's wrong and sort of like, I want to help people fix it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you see where I'm going with it? Yeah. Like, the way that I kind of want to distill it is like, seize the big picture. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, Tony. Uh, sorry, I'm a little confused. What are we doing right now? The MO? 
VMO, yeah, what kind of person are you? What's your specialty? How will you fight the authority? What's your concept? It can answer some, all, none, one of those questions. Huh. Um, I'm torn between two different ones. Come back to me. Okay, Rain. Um, I want to rip open the digital world. I want to. I want to have there be no constraints or subliminal messages. I just want it to be free and open for everybody to enjoy and to experience. Nice. It's very Ready Player One, but I like it. <laughs> Information <laughs> wants to be free, yo. <laughs> no one can stop the signal now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so that brings us back to Tony. All right. Um, I'm going to ask for help on this one because I'm torn between uh, going full wolf time or going full show time. And I'm not sure if they can like both be going at the same time, which I guess would be wolf show, but. Okay. So the other thing that I'm going to say is the other free one that you get is your, like that you don't have to choose from a list is your disorder, which is like your fatal flaw. So maybe one of those could be your fatal flaw. Like you're the consummate showman and you're always going to like. Always your... going to kill it. Always going to tear it down. Um, but I'm, like. Like uh, always going to break a leg is a better way to put it. Put it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not necessarily burn it down, but like, I'm always going to like kill it. Yeah. No, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> okay um we can also move on to disorder and come back to you for mo how about that yeah because i basically have to pick which of those is which now okay gotcha um so uh rain do you know what your disorder is your fatal flaw so for people that are following along at home your I'm... fatal flaw is used last if you sell it out it's the last episode. The game ends. Um, the way this system works is that each of the things that we have uh, picked before, like uh, tough or smart or cool or fast, sells out to something else. That is how you uh, get out of confrontations with the authority that go badly. So once you sell out your disorder, you have sell you have sold out basically the last piece of your soul. So basically, uh, once you sell that out, there's nothing else that the authority can do to you. You are the authority's shill. So to quote V for Vendetta, the last inch of you. Yes, the last inch of you. What is the last inch of you that is like also your fatal flaw? Okay, I've got it. My MO is showtime and my disorder is wolf time. So how about Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Rain, how about your... electronic safe place? Okay. How's that? How's that going to work out? Um, she's kind of naive in the idea that she can rip open the net, and that this is the safe place to be, and that this is no matter what happens, she can retreat to it. Hmm. Okay, but what would that sell out to? That would sell out to showing them the back door. Yeah. Mm. Or true face of the net or something like that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, I just wanted to kind of plant that seed. All right, Lauren. Okay. I don't know what to call it, but I know what it would sell out to. Okay. What would it sell out to? It would sell out to reacceptance, like thinking, oh, they do love me and they do know what's best for me. Okay. Like, uh, so it would sell out to like prodigal son returns. Yeah. Um, like, oh, oh, what if it was, uh, what if it was prodigal daughter and it sold out to the princess returns? I like that. How about that, Lauren? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh God, that's yeah. Okay, and Michelle. I'm afraid that she actually, if she goes too far, become an actual problem. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to like distill that into like two or three words now. I mean, this shouldn't be what goes down on paper, but it'd be like, the uh, the the good side is Professor X and the sellout is Magneto, or depending on who you believe was right the other way around. <laughs> or like Ultron. Mm. You know, the whole, oh, I know, I see everything that's wrong. I have to just destroy it all. Right. Like, like everything. Yeah, like yes. utopia through fire. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to put Disorder Ultron and know that <laughs> we know what that means. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. That does sound like a disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I love nerd shorthand. Yep. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do, it's not part of the system, but it's part of something that I do, um, in all of my games, um, that are not one shots is, um, everybody needs to have a connection with somebody else. I take this from like the fate system. Um, so like if you've ever played Dresden Files or anything like that, um, where it's just like there, you are either the, the story's protagonist or you're a supporting character in somebody else's story. Um, and they're like little vignettes of like what happened and how you got to know each other. So like, um, it could be that, um, the story is uh, the day Lauren's character's roots started to show and uh, Michelle's character was there to comfort her as she cried um, or something like that. Um, so just, um, I guess we'll start with Lauren and go around and say like, what is the story that you were starring in? And then somebody will say, like, ooh, I could be the supporting character that does X. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. hold on. Let me uh, get back to the Google document. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so she's 15. So two years ago was when Grace first started noticing something was wrong. She was feeling really bad in the mornings when she'd wake up just things weren't right um her powers weren't working like they were supposed to things started popping out of place and uh then right around then just under the stress of it all under everything uh it wasn't on the recording of a show or maybe it was no it was during the recording of a show, not live. It was recorded so they could go back and, you know, edit stuff in and everything. But instead of just producing, oh, nice little bundle of flowers. Oh, aren't they pretty? A whole fucking tree just grew out of her hands. And that was enough to cause the roots to just rip through her arms. And those roots, once they started growing, no matter what they tried to do, they tried to pull them out and they tried uh, just all sorts of stuff. And no matter what they did, they just kept coming back and kept coming back. And the stress of that and the stress of all the other stuff that was going wrong with her physically 
uh, besides the roots, uh, they took her off the air and put her away and told her, you're not good enough anymore. This is a sign that you must not be doing something right. And for months afterwards, um, they just they just put her back in a little testing pod with the other kids, and she didn't know how to cope because she had been special, and now she was just like everyone else, except with these horrible roots and joints that wouldn't stop dislocating. And that was when just sort of the first seeds of something isn't right started planting in her head and just over the years it just kept coming as things just kept getting worse and they kept telling her this is your fault this is your fault mm -hmm. and who is like the guest star in this like who do you meet when you go back into the testing pod who's the person that consoled you who's the oh i'm going to be totally fascinated by her <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am just going to, oh, oh, I am going to convince her that, because I can see, and I want to help, and I can see, like, every, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna You'd be, probably be able to tell what's actually wrong yeah. with her joints and stuff, and be yeah. like, oh, no, this isn't some weird curse, this is just a thing that happens. Yeah. You'd be able to put it all together. Exactly, that would be me. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So then we'll move on to um, Michelle. Do you have a name for your character yet? Jade. Jade. All right. Wonderful. Um, so what is, uh, what is the story that Jade is the star of and someone else is the guest star of? Well... Jade was, of course, raised in the system because she has no memory of parents or anything mm -hmm. and, and such. So Lion and Lamb, of course, have been her parents. And her genetic markers, of course, they, they, they thought they wanted someone perhaps super smart or something like that. But then they realized that perhaps that wasn't such a good idea. Uh, she is realizing things that she should not be realizing. She is seeing pictures that she should not. Um, the internet, it, it, it's it, like she can actually get information. She doesn't need the internet so much. You know, it, it's not so much like photographic memory. It's like she's just, she knows stuff. And they're like, we don't know if that's a good thing or perhaps we should, we, we should monitor her more. Let's put her in this place so we can really watch her we've been watching her but we really need to watch her even more now okay gotcha and who who is going to jump in as the guest star for that uh i can see it being like quinn was also part of the system fairly early on um because they, you know, they, they demonstrated earlier that they have certain affinities. And okay, I so can Quinn, see. Sorry. Yeah. One end or two see, ends? Uh, two ends. Okay. Um, I can see Quinn being this very shy, standoffish, doesn't talk much. So I could see Quinn trying to make their first friend. And that's kind of how they got together is that. There is this person that just had information. There's this person that could access information. And I, I have a mental image of Quinn just kind of sitting there. <laughs> just like, are we friends yet? Are we, are we friends yet? <laughs> How about now? How about now? <laughs> I would let you know. <laughs> now is the moment. And at 1029. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. So let's move to... Um, Rain. Tell me about Quinn. What's Quinn's uh what's Quinn's big story? Uh Quinn was also sold fairly early. Um partly because of her affinities, but also because their eyes are just weird. Like 
everybody thinks that their eyes are weird and her parents wanted nothing to do with that. Um, and they fairly early on demonstrated a kind of a rebellious nature. They, they would take risks that weren't necessary. They would go into digital playgrounds that they weren't allowed in and nobody could really stop them. Okay. Um, so they got sent to this, they, they too are being closely monitored. Uh, they, the monitors think they're closely monitoring them. Um, so they were sent to this testing pod as a kind of uh, monitoring station slash foil. They, they, they want to limit what they can do. Okay. Um, Tony, how do you fit into this? Um, okay, so... First off, I think I got the name, uh, and it's a very, very bad, uh, uh, not pun, but obvious, uh, obvious sourcing, if you know it, uh, for a name I'm thinking, uh, Lupo McTeer. <laughs> yeah, she gets it. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. Lord. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Are, are we liking that one? <laughs> okay. So uh, when when he realized that the authority was had given him a show that you know he could showcase his you know true self and also uh, do the uh, singing that he loves so much, uh, kind of Freddie Mercury kind of wolf boy here. Uh, when he realized that they were trying to portray the wolf side of him as bad, he searched out the most skilled hacker he could find, which was Quinn, to release a, a song called Amber Eyes, uh, you know, not surreptitiously, like huge, all over the internet, but for free, okay. uh, which became such a huge hit that the authority was forced to... Uh, incorporate uh aspects of the wolf sign being wolf side being good actually um and they're still trying to you know work around that back to their original message but for now they're kind of stuck with this uh the you know the amber eyes uh canon that everybody's working from okay good All right, and then what is what is the rest of that story, and how does it how does it fit in with uh, Grace? Um, who's Grace again? Uh, Lauren's character. Okay, uh, it fits in with Grace because after that, they were like, "Okay, okay, you've had your fun, you made your point. Now we're going to hook you up with this very trusted uh, former performer of ours who had a great run." did everything right and you're going to learn from her how to toe the line and mind the rules you know wagging a finger the whole time i'm sorry that i don't have the video up but <laughs> yeah just sort of this is what happens when you don't when when you don't listen this is what like here here's a babysitter uh, here's somebody to who we trust who will you know, make kind you of straighten up and fly right. Yeah, and Grace is like, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. Do it loud. By the way, I saw this. I saw you in this movie. Can you sign this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I think that is um, some good um, initial contacts. Everybody has like at least a contact with somebody else. Um, we are getting kind of late. What time did we guys, what time did you guys want to wrap tonight? 1045, 11 EST? Um, 1045. 1045. Okay. That leaves us with about 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign you guys homework. Because no! I'm 
because <laughs> I am a teacher at heart and lion and lamb um, is very education based. Um, I want you guys on the discord to, I um, didn't know you'd get this close into your authority so soon. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, on the discord, uh, find some time to talk to each other and come up with a couple of other um, connections. So like um, Lauren figure out a connection with Rain, Michelle figure out a connection with Tony, uh, Rain figure out a connection with um, someone else. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, um, it's getting late. I'm tired. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just to like, um, make sure that everybody has a tie in with somebody else, with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, As homework goes, that's not too bad. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't like giving homework that doesn't make sense. Um, I like giving homework that is going to further the story. Um, okay. So. However, here's this word problem. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you would like, uh, I, I challenge you all to a game of Scrabble. No. Uh, <laughs> I have a request. Uh, yeah. That everybody uh, come up with a song for their character. Ooh. Uh, I come up with I the what? Love song. As it, as it might be clear from the character uh, concept, I love music and tying it into uh, you know the games we play and how we think of our characters and all that. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to know about your characters through the songs that you pick for them. Oh, such Daft Punk is about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, is there anything else that you guys wanted to bring up before we close for the night? Um, we're gonna do the kind of end of world building next week. We're gonna go back and talk about like the uh, things that are exploitable uh, for the authority. We're gonna go back and we're gonna talk about um, what's its bucket? Um, as uh, and also the brutalities. We're also gonna come up with a couple of authority figures that I can inhabit because I like crowdsourcing that material. And then we're gonna talk about uh, what happened immediately prior to session one. So I think about half of next week's game is gonna be character creation, or not character creation, world building. And then we're gonna jump straight into the action. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So where do we live? Like, do we... I assume that there is a complex in like, I figured we had one of those like open dorm kind of things where there's like a bunch of different rooms and then like a central living and kitchen area. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I was picturing too. Are so, we exposed to any other testing pods or just the four of us? Um, you are... What if we're competing against other child star testing pods? Ooh. So you know them by reputation and you see them at, uh, you see them at meals because like you have your own kitchen, but that's more for like snacks. There's a, there is like a giant mess hall where all the teen stars get together and like. Uh, Those clicky <sighs> bastards. Yes. High school cafeteria <laughs> bullshit. Oh God. And in true capitalist media uh, conglomeration form that is a show in and of itself yeah they're being filmed but they don't know it and it gets leaked by like Perez Hilton fairly <laughs> regularly uh, or you know not Perez for, Hilton for some know. reason Perez Hilton's still alive at this point <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just one of those like cryogenically frozen heads in a video. <laughs> Welcome to the future. Well, Res Hilton and Carson Welcome Bailey. to the world of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for some reason, Leonard Nimoy. Yes. yes. 
or perhaps his personality was uploaded into the net and he's just like this algorithm. Yeah, this <laughs> algorithm that is just like that's you, that's my ultimate goal. Gossip. I must burn down the concept of Perez Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to veto Leonard Nimoy. I don't want to imagine Leonard Nimoy shackled to this. Okay, oh, no, that's fair. fair. That yeah. is super fair. Okay. Let that man be free. But Perez yes. Hilton and Carson Daly are completely open. Excellent. Okay. Um, are there any closing thoughts that anybody has? Burn it all down! Yeah, clearly burn it all down is the takeaway. Um, but is burn there anything else? With the guitar, so. Yeah, burn it all, <laughs> burn it all down. We <laughs> basically <laughs> took we basically took Teenage Rebellion and turned it into Callisto 6. <laughs> oh my god, we did. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't get that reference. It's a, a Callisto Six is a, a new role playing show put out by uh, Eric Geek and Sundry. Campbell, I think his name is yeah. Uh, it's on Geek and Sundry, but it's it's a cipher system game where they're playing superheroes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Beautiful. And it has, on uh, Fridays. Yes, and it has Sam Eleven in it, mm -hmm. who is one of my favorite people. They are amazing. Warriors meets Glee. Or High School Musical, or one of those. <laughs> All right. So, um, as it is getting to about that time o'clock, um, I wanted to shout out um, a couple of people that made this possible. Um, obviously, uh, Throck for starting the Welcome to the Party channel and for giving me the opportunity to GM. And also um, a huge thank you to Nerdy Teddy Bear, who was our producer for this evening, um, who uh, doesn't get nearly uh, enough applause. Yes, big hearts, big hearts for Nerdy Teddy. Um, um, let's see, who else? So Throck and Nerdy Teddy. And um, I want to thank all of my players for making this a really enjoyable experience because sometimes uh, world building, collaborative world building can be like pulling teeth. And this was actually really fun. I had a lot of laughs. I did a spit take. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, yeah. It's on and, the internet forever. Yes, it's on the internet forever. Um, so yeah, a massive thank you to Tony, Michelle, Lauren, and Rain. Once again, my name is Nori. You can find me on Twitter at Science Weasels or on the Welcome to the Party Discord channel. You can also find me on Tumblr at Science Weasels. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna throw it out to anybody else who has any shout outs that they'd like to do, anything else that they'd like to uh, promote. Uh, shout out to the host of the, uh, the webs and the packets, Devin there. Thank you. Uh, and shout out to Latovostein. All right. Anybody else? Uh, come watch me Sunday mornings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have, um, such an amazing lineup on, uh, welcome to the party, especially on Sundays. Sundays, we have Winds of Chaos, which is Warhammer Fantasy at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then we have Tales from the Kingdom of Fife, which is D&D 3.5 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then, of course, at 8.30, you have uh, all of us lovable bastards. Um, yeah. Um, there's also a bunch of other stuff. I know that right now on Wednesdays, Nerdy Teddy Bear is running Ruby the Vampire Slayer, which is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer RPG at 8 p.m. EST on Wednesdays. And, um, there's a bunch of other great stuff. So, uh, please tune in and, um, thank you all for watching. Does uh, anybody else have anything? I apologize. I have an extended shout out. Uh, shout out to Latovostein and Solon at, uh, Rainy Day Let's Play. Uh, check them out. Okay. They um, took my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. Uh, we will see you back here next week at 8.30 for uh, the last little bit of world building and the start of the wild rumpus. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, and I will see you next week. Later. Bye.